Hey everybody, fall has arrived here in Wisconsin. We have a few more days of detecting, but now's the time of the year where many of us will start to kind of clean our machines, put stuff away, and do a little bit more research. You know, learn more about our machines, about the hobby, maybe spend some time on next year's permissions. So today, what I'm gonna do is a video. It's, a, it's gonna be an air test. I'm gonna test 37 different items, some trash, some coins and some jewelry and i'm going to repeat this test across my three different detectors the nocta macro simplex the equinox 800 and the xprx so if that sounds interesting to you stay tuned All right, let's take a look at the setup for today's test. What I have set up here are three different boards that you can see here, some of which contain coins, that's the first two. The third contains various items of jewelry, and the fourth contains a few pieces of pretty common trash, bottle caps, pull tabs, nails, that type of thing. And what we're gonna do here we're just gonna do an air test and I just wanna get a feel for the tone. I wanna get a feel for the target ID. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's go. Okay, we're gonna do the test here with the Nocta Macro Simplex. And just to start here, let me say this is version 2.77. I elected not to update to 2.78. I'm gonna complete this air test today in Park 2 mode. I'm not necessarily looking for the depth that you get, the incremental depth from Park 1. You can notice my sensitivity is down one notch. I may even decrease that a little bit more if I get a lot of chatter. All other settings are default and um, I've not messed with. To begin with on our first board here, we're gonna start with a modern Lincoln penny. Let's see how the Nocta Macro Simplex reacts to the penny. Okay, here we're getting us anywhere from a 66. I think I saw a 69 pop up in there as well. Okay, for the penny. The Next coin is a wheat cent, a wheat penny. Seventy-three, seventy-seven. I think I saw in there. Seventy-eight. Okay, we get an idea of the range for that. That's going to be followed by a copper penny. This is going to be copper. Much tighter signal. Seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Okay, I'm gonna notch that sensitivity down by one. Okay. Okay. Next up is the famous Indian head penny, one of my favorite coins. Let's see how that registers. 68 to 70. 68 to 72. Okay. Okay, this next one is, I believe this is an 1862 two cent coin that I did not find, that I purchased as part of my collection. 75, 76, seven. I notice when I swing faster with this machine, the signal tends to stabilize. So watch what happens when I go slower here. It's a little jumpy. When I go faster, she settles down a bit. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, next up is a large scent. A large scent, a braided hair large scent. Ninety-five, ninety-six. Looks like those are the most common right there. Okay, next we have a barber nickel. We're gonna do some nickels next. This is a barber nickel. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. 
Interesting. 2425. Buffalo nickel. The uh, Indian head nickel. Buffalo nickel. Twenty four twenty six. Again, I'm going to turn that sensitivity down one more. This is a slightly larger coil than my other two that I'm testing. May have the targets a little close together for the simplex here. Twenty five twenty six. Okay. This next coin I happened to just dig about a week ago. It's what's referred to as a worn nickel. And don't hold me to this. I might have the years wrong, but uh, there were I think three, two or three years, nineteen. 42, 43, 44, when the U.S. government needed nickel for manufacturing of war items, and for that period of time, upped the silver content of the nickel. So I think these are 40% silver. I'm not 100%, but 24, 25. It's not enough to change the ID, target ID. That's, that's been similar on the other tests I've run with my other machines. Uh, this last nickel is a modern Jefferson nickel, also 2425, okay? And for fun, on the last, the last item on this board is a Roman coin I purchased off of eBay. I have no clue what type of Roman coin this is. You'll see a picture of it up here in a moment. Maybe somebody can comment. I don't think this is what's called a hammered coin. Could be, don't know. But just for fun, let's see what this rings up as. 6566. Well, there we have it. All right, on this board, we're going to begin with a modern Roosevelt dime. This is minted sometime in 2000. 7678. Okay, saw a 75 pop in there. 7677. The next coin on here is a trime. I wish I found this coin. I did not. This is a coin that I've purchased. 55. 58. Up, up in that range. 56, 57 seems to be where it's settling. Okay, this next one is a barber dime. Let's see how this rings up. 76, 77. Simplex is pretty good with dimes. Next coin here is a silver mercury dime. First of a couple mercury dimes here. Actually, that barber was silver. I stand corrected. I believe that's silver. Silver mercury. 78, 79. Sounds great. Those are great to find. Following that is a silver Roosevelt dime with an ant ready to crawl on its head. 78, 79 for the Silver Rosie. He's even up in the low 80s there. Okay, now we have a modern quarter. This is a post-1964 quarter. And on the simplex, it's ringing up 91. 91. How does that compare to a pre-1964 Washington quarter, a silver Washington quarter? This one was uh, minted in 1936. Let's see. 9192. Following that is a coin I found in the local river, about three feet of water, right on the ground. Uh, was it kind of in a vertical position here? 1906 Silver Barber Quarter, just waiting to be rediscovered. Let's see what she has to say today. Wow, nice solid 92. That was a blast finding that coin. My friend Dylan just pulled one of these out of a local scout camp here. This is a an SLQ standing Liberty quarter. 9192. Yes, very similar. And at the end of this board, last and certainly not least, we have a Morgan Silver Dollar. Let's see how that sounds. Wow. 96. That is on my bucket list. I did not find that. 
I hope to find one of those someday. Let's go to our next board. Here we have our jewelry board. We're going to begin with a 10 karat men's gold wedding band. Boy, that's 44, 45. In that range, one thing I've learned about gold, depending on the type of gold, the amount of gold content, gold is all over the place in terms of target IDs. If you don't believe me, take a look at some of the other videos where all they do is air tests on different type of gold rings. Um, you're going to find gold all over the place, especially in the aluminum tab range, that type of thing. Next item on our jewelry board here is a small Cub Scout ring. I believe this is silver. Let me flatten my coil here. Here we're ringing up 92 to 94 for the Cub Scout ring. This next item, I almost didn't dig. I was on a local beach and uh, I was using my Equinox at the time and the target ID was in bottle cap range. But I dug it because it was a solid, repeatable signal and it's a tungsten wedding ring. 50, 51, tungsten wedding ring. After that, we have a cross. Don't think this has a lot of silver in it. Maybe silver plated, not even sure of that. Ringing up 47, 49 ish. We have a sterling silver ring. At least it's uh, it's a it has point uh, 925 in it, 927, whatever that is. 63, 60. This is ringing up, yeah, low 60s. Let's just say that. Okay. A small woman's ring. I'll put the name of the manufacturer here. It escapes me at the moment. 6970. We have a men's costume jewelry ring. Happened to belong to my dad. Nothing of great value, but of sentimental value. 27, 28. It's dad's ring. There we go. Last on this board, woman's costume jewelry ring found also on a beach. 68 to 70 ish. Okay, that's it for the jewelry board. Last board in the test here with the simplex is the trash board, something near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we don't like to dig it, come across it all the time. So let's take a look at some of those signals on the simplex here. This first item is a bottle cap from a large Miller Lite 50, high 40s. Wow, it's all over the place because you can tell it's crushed. So just the fact that the signal is kind of disparate and jumpy tells us something. High 40s, low 50s. Next is a bottle cap that's in pretty good shape from a um, soda bottle. 72 up to 75. I think I saw a 75 in there. 71, 75. How about a bottle cap from a Corona Light? A Corona Light. 71, 75 ish is the other side of that range. I like my Corona Lights with a lime. I don't know about you. The next one here, we just have a a uh, the pull ring. Okay, the pull ring here and. Lower tone, do you hear the sound on that? 36, and it's very jumpy. 36 to low 40s. Following that, we have the pull ring with the beaver tail tab. Also jumpy. Look at that, so we're talking 27, 32, wow. Okay, next is, I'll call this a more of a modern pull tab. These came a little later. I often confuse these with nickels. Yep. 24 all the way up to 30 something. Wow. And then we have some ferrous metal here at the end of this board. You know, we're getting that iron grunt here. Signal's much lower. Both of these, very similar. 
Okay. Hey folks, I hope that was helpful for you. What I have done um, over the last year here for my various detectors is I compile these different cheat sheets while I'm learning my machine. You know, after a while you just kind of memorize these numbers. And of course the tones are important too. And if you have the time, you know, dig those solid tones. Uh, you know, I'm learning too. There's other little nuances as well, depending on what happens to the signal as you're pulling it back from the target. You know, those last few beeps are critical. But in the meantime, I hope some of these target IDs will either confirm for you what you already knew, or maybe give you pause to um, not pass up a target and give it a dig. So at any rate, thanks for watching the video. If you like these, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. Happy hunting.